due to weather change, uh, we all, all of us are facing some health problems. So she's also uh, feeling well, she's not feeling well. So she may not be able to bless us physically, but she has sent us her blessings. I'm expecting Director Saab, Shri B.N. Dikshit, Legal Metallurgy, Director, Government of India. He is recently, he will be joining us shortly. I'm just waiting for him. But in the meantime, I would like to introduce our expert of today, Dr. Mukesh Javaria, who is the scientist, senior scientist at National Physical Laboratory in New Delhi. He is basically, he has received MSc in Physics from IIT Rurki and MTech in Laser Technology from Devi Ahilya Mahavishwavidyalaya Indore. He has also received BSc in Physics from Kyoto University, Japan. He worked as a specially appointed researcher in the Renovation Center of Instruments for Science Education and Technology, Osaka University, Japan. He has later on worked at, as an assistant professor in the Institute of Technology and Science, <clears throat> the University of Tokushima, Tokushima, Japan. He was a visiting scientist at Korea Atomic Energy Research Institute, South Korea. Currently, he is working as a senior scientist at National Physical Laboratory, India, Delhi. He is a recipient of Moon Bukang, Bukang Shu Fellowship, Japan, JSPS Taking Knee and Korean Research Fellowships. Other than he is qualified GATE, CSIR, NET, JEST, etc. He has more than 53 publications, two book chapter, and more than 60 conference papers. His research interest includes generation of high power uh, tetrahertz pulse, terahertz spectroscopy, terahertz imaging, and terahertz frequency metrology. Length metrology, dimensional metrology, development of materials for terahertz detectors, and ultra fast spectroscopy. His current interest is to realize SI unit meter using quantum standard. Basically, we have requested him to kindly deliver a talk on how this length has been changed since 2020. Because as we are all aware, the unit of length was already taken place from the fundamental constants of nature, which is the speed of light. But how we are planning to realize in our own country at a National Physical Laboratory and then later on at the Regional Reference Standards Laboratories, we will discuss with him. Secondly, we are having our uh, length measures or uh, what we call them uh, slip gauges. So how to calibrate the slip gauges, how to find their uncertainties, how to do the length measurements, and how to find their uncertainties. We will take his whole help, complete help to do this. Later on, I will also share with you his presentation, as well as some Excel sheets to calculate or to find the uncertainty calculations. So first, uh, now I would like to thank Dr. Javaria, who is kind enough to come with us to explain all these very interesting subjects to our participants. Thank you, all the participants. Now I will request Dr. Javaria to kindly start his presentation. Please, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so kind of you, and thanks to nice introduction. So we all are working in length and dimension. And uh, before starting, let me tell you that the primary standard of length is iodine sterilized helium neon laser. But many NMIs nowadays don't use iodine stabilized helium laser, they use optical frequency comb. So I, in my first lecture, I will tell you how the parameter of the length how the measurement of the length, the process of the measurement of length change from ages, uh, from the time of pyramid of mist to now. Okay, so I want to share my PPT directly, is okay.
Yeah. Are you able to see my PPT? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so today, first I will talk about the realization of SI unit meter, that is the measurement, measurement of land. So, uh, if I can say a proverb that it is the measurement that makes the science scientific. So, without measurement, without a value, without a number, we cannot tell, we cannot do something which we can tell the science. Science needs a number and that number needs the measurement. So there are two major, there are seven base as a unit. Like for, uh, for mass, it's a kilogram. For land, it's meter. For time, it's second. For current, it's ampere. For temperature, it's Kelvin. For amount of substance, it's mole. And for luminosity, it's candela. So most of, not most, all the entity in this world are measured by these seven base SI unit. Today, in my talk, I will cover the meter, how to measure the length using meter. So what is measurement? So measurement is a quantitative comparison of an unknown quantity with a standard quantity. So suppose you want to say that the length of this room is five meter, then how you compare? You compare with your standard of one meter. It's five times of that particular standard. Or if something is in micro, then you can say it's a one in one into the power minus six part of one meter. So what we do, we compare the unknown quantity with a known known quantity or known uh, thing that is known as standard. So standard is something which is defined that we have to compare all the other things based on this. So you can see in my PPT that we are comparing the unknown with standard. So that's why standard plays a very load. So could we choose our standard more wisely? More wisely means the standard should be user friendly. Solve the purpose of the human, mankind and society. So how to choose the standards? So with the standard, there is an international body which defines the internal systems of unit that is BIPM in the France. And the committee was constituted in BIPM, that is CIPM, Committee of Weights and Majors. Okay. So that general conference will take place and decide what kind of unit, what kind of standards are required to make the standards so that the committee gives recommendations and there are many things. So on 19 May 2020, all the base SI unit, which depends on the artifact, okay, that was changed on the base of fundamental constants. So like mass now don't depend on the one kg weight but it depends on the Planck constant H. Meter, it was already defined by fundamental constant velocity of light. So still it is going to be with the velocity of light. Second, it is the transient frequency between cesium atom. Then ampere on the basis of electronic charge, then temperature, based on voltage man constant and amount of substance mole is on Avogadro number and candle is candle luminous intensity. So these all seven base SI unit now depends on fundamental constant, not on artifact like mass have one kg artifact, previous length have one meter road like this. So, you know, this on 20 May 2019 is a devolution. 
So that revolution changed. So in 1790, there was a revolution in France. They removed the jar and make their systems to rule that country. So similarly, on 20 May 2019, we made our means BIPM made our own rule to govern all the fundamental base SI units. So to understand how it is possible, I will attempt to bring you a short history of plan, how people thought and think to change some unit or fundamental quantity. So in ancient time, the length was measured by phantom, cubit, arm and foot like this like this or like this so they use the body of the human to measure something and still we measure like one meter is like this okay so to the early approach to use length is by human body and they use human body as a standard so what they do instead of taking the uh, human body of a common man what they use, they take the measure of the cubit, means from low part of elbow to forefront. This is called pharaoh's arm. Pharaoh means king. So they take king's arm as a length standard. Okay. And that arm, where till the king will alive, that arm will be their standard. So using that standard, they made a marble cubit. And by using that marble and wood cubit, I will tell you. They made the pyramids, Egypt pyramid. So till means when people don't know about the metrology, these people invented such kind of standards that still they made, they are able to make a huge structure without any perfect measurement at that time. So similar artifact, if you find sometimes going from town to town. So what happened now? One king is with heavy body and one king with a small body, yeah, one person. So whose arm is less and whose arm is very high. So they cannot compare. So it varies from city to city, king to king. Okay, so what happened in this case, that is not unique. So we need a length measurement system which should be unique in that region. So what they did that time since Man body is dependent on the physical size of the human. So what they think, what is constant by which we can define the length? So the constant is the radius of the earth, curvature of the earth. So in 1791, the king of, you can say, France have decided because they, it's a time of the industrial revolution. So they want to transport the goods from Europe to, let's say, India, America, some other countries. But the problem is equal measurements of the weight, equal measurement of the length. So a short merchant will give you the less cloth as compared to the tall merchant. So everybody will go to the tall merchant, then nobody will go. So this is these were the problem faced there because there was no unique system for the measurements. So a committee was formed and what they decided what is constant and they found that earth radius is constant earth cannot change so during this french revolution in 1790 the metric system came into picture that based on meter with a particular philosophy that philosophy was when you go because earth is a round square so if you go from top one point to the middle it's a half circumference Okay, so then, then meter was to be measured in all the things and it was in the spirit of equality and fraternity means it will be equal for whole country, the person living in America, person living in India and the person living in Egypt or person living in England, all have same metric system. So that time what they did, they took a rope, a big rope, that rope was of uh, one kilometer length today. And that time there was no big uh, population. So people use easily from point to point the uh, radius of the earth, curvature of the earth. 
they put the rope from one point, then from next point, then next one from, you see, top of this earth to the middle of that middle, they took it as a France. So any point is the middle for the sphere. So by this way, then they measure, okay? And then they measure is half curvature is around 10,000 kilometer. So it is very difficult to have a one kilometer road or uh, road where we can preserve. So what they did, they made the uh, uh, one raised to power uh, six part as a one meter. Okay, and by this way, they define, so I will tell, they define one meter. So why they define the one meter? When that one meter will remain for all the times, it's not here and there, for all the people, all the people of this world. So for all the time, it will not change in day and night. It will not change from person to person. It will not change like the sunrise in America and then uh, in UK, it's different. So it's for all the time, Time means like 2020 and then 2022, it's the same. So for all the time and for all the people, it's remained the same. So they make a meter bar first of wood. So this meter is it's still kept in BIB marching. So earth, the earth as a definition of meter was clear to everybody that time. And it's more stable and global. Then the Paro's harm was CT specific standard. They went out, took out, and this meter bar is took the position of the, those standards. So using this, now they made in 1875 uh, an alloy of iridium and platinum because wood can break, wood can slow, marble can break. So they need such a material which is very stable, non-corrosive, and easily cannot break and cannot change. So if you want to measure one meter by one meter, if it's a change in micron, maybe that time it was not so uh, means uh, problematic. People will not think because they were busy, busy in making the roads. But when you go for lower dimension in micron and nano, and it changes, it's a problem how to measure. So they they fix the two point on that platinum iridium uh, bar, and this bar is known as Tessa meter bar. Tessa was a engineer who invented this platinum iridium road. Okay, and this Tessa bar is given to all the countries. Okay, India received fifty seven. Uh, number of that war and that that year was also 57 okay so india so india means npl was the custodian of all the si unit so india received that 57 number copy is the same exactly like this one and we call it replica 57 okay so the two point denoted on this bar is one meter so in 1875 by convention to meter there was a conference on meter we call it uh, meter convention, the meter of R, which was replaced with a line standard like this, and that wood and artifact base. That time, those this is also also artifact that artifact base is removed. So, as I told, this is the artifact. Okay, so something will change. So then, in 1960, uh, laser was invented by Michael means. Uh, 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 invented and Michelson did a simple experiment of interferometric base. And he realized that SI unit meter by using laser. So uh, he measure means uh, I will tell in the definition that one meter is the path traveled by light in vacuum in one by C second. So when light travel in one by C second, the distance is almost same exactly as the one meter on that pointed on the Bar. Okay, so then because that was also an artifact, and artifact changes from country to country. Okay, from Denmark, Norway, very cold countries, Africa, India, very warm countries. Of course, the environmental condition was preserved 20 degree, but there may be some changes. There may be some rust. There may be some scratch. 
on the meter bar so it will change with the time it will degrade with the time so they want a new definition based on something we call fundamental constant that it will not change so soon the distance between two scratches become inadequate as a standard and people use the wavelength of light as a de facto standard then they, because that time laser just came into picture in 1960 but there was monochromatic light which we call crypto lens so from 1960 to 82 the definition of meter based on this micron interferometer was by krypton lens and they define it some transition between so those number of transition is called 1 meter but since that was not so popular and people that time not means uh, easy to accept because as i told you people were are more uh, interested to make the roads buildings construction as compared to the uh, Uh, nano or micro dimensions so that was not popular but in 1983 when laser was fully matured then they changed the definition from krypton lamp to the iodine stabilized laser so people still use as a unofficial standard of length but krypton lamp but most of the nmi at that time worked on iodine stabilized laser and it's the same condition now that people are starting working on uh, optical frequency comb so this is the primary standard of length that is iodine stabilized helium neon laser in india in npl so this uh, particular iodine stabilized laser is used okay and from here the beam comes and we, we make a kind of interferometer by beam splitter and the means we calibrate uh, the another laser by this one so i will tell you again here this is 633 nanometer iodine stabilized helium neon laser we call it iodine stabilizer because iodine is stabilized by these by components frequency components in iodine so we fix the frequency of one of the component a b c d e f g h i but most prominent are d e f so we fix on d e or f and lock the frequency and calibrate another laser and that laser will be used at lower places i will tell you later in my another presentation how that will be so this laser also is uh, what official definition from 1982 and still now it is official definition but the meter is needed to be redefined why because the obvious choice is define the meter in terms of iodine stabilized laser why because it's a brilliant choice to define the speed of light so we fix the speed of light when we fix the speed of light we know vacuum condition and in vacuum when light is travel in 1 by c second whatever distance is achieved is 1 meter so what They do. They choose pick up a very beautiful definition in 17 meter, 17 cgpm in 1983. So meter is defined at that time. Now it little bit changed, but it's almost same, but little bit changed. So that time they define the meter is the length of the path traveled by light in vacuum during a time interval of. 1 by c where c is fixed 299 792 480 458 seconds so that this effectively defines that lambda multiply by frequency is equal to c okay so lambda we want to measure 633 nanometer but wavelength we cannot measure directly so we measure frequency so f is equal to c by lambda so if this 633 nanometer the some frequency as i said na iodine stabilized laser so for iodine stabilized laser, let's say d d i a frequency of 474 it's something 473 point something but i will tell you roughly 474 terahertz if that exactly comes it is 
that laser means have this same wavelength at 633 nanometer. So if we know the frequency of any light, we know its wavelength. So the definition incorporates improvement in lasers and frequency measurement. So what is the problem you see in my definition? This definition incorporates the improvement in laser, means laser of course, monochromity and everything, and frequency, its frequency should be stable. So in 2005, because I didn't stabilize laser, have some certain frequencies only, and blocking those frequencies itself have some uncertainty. So Theodore Holmes and John Hall came with some other ideas. Instead of, suppose I want to give some work to three persons. So I have a choice and I have dependency. If these, any of these three will be available with me, then only I can work. If they are not available, I cannot work. Okay. So they want that instead of the three person, if I have 10 power, six numbers of person with same qualification, same attitude, same aptitude, then my dependency will be less. So they came with a very brilliant idea of optical frequency comb. So in 2005, the Nobel Prize, John Hall and Theodore Hans was changed the, and the, made the improvement in measuring the frequency of light. So they, beautiful definition, the definition of meter is in both brilliant and beautiful, they what they say, today the CGPM is about to bring the same beauty to the kilogram. Okay, so that is the artifact. Why and how we will talk later. So what they did, they make a optical frequency comb. So what I said, I have choice of only three component, D, E, and F. Of course, there are other component, F, G, H, A, B, C, but they are very less. Means uh, we are not able to load them properly sometimes. So, but instead of three optical frequency have, Delta of five or six equidistance line. Okay, so I can pick up any component and lock it. So my locking uncertainty is now at less. I will not say zero less as compared to iodine stabilized laser. Okay. Second thing is with uh, locking uh, uh, locking uncertainty, iodine stabilized laser have accuracy of ten power minus seven only. Means if we go ten power seven meter then there is an uncertainty of one meter. But with optical waveform, since we have many lines and its accuracy tends to minus, uh, people say minus 13, but now it's minus 19. So if you go tends to 19 meter distance, then only you have one meter uncertainty, one meter error. So it, it, it's almost, it's more than uh, two, two times, not only two orders, many orders higher than as compared to the iodine stabilized helium neon laser. So this is optical comb. Optical comb is what? It's a frequency ruler. And people call it ruler of the light. Ruler means king of the light. So optical frequency comb is known as the king of the light. It's a optical spectrum consisting of equidistance optical frequencies. Okay, maybe you see are equidistance if you see here you can look any one frequency so uncertainty in locking is now very very less so how to realize the one meter so means we take the signal because upper time signal from cgm atomic clock whose uncertainty is minus 15 so we use optical frequency comb so optical frequency measurement density minus 19, as I said. So because CITM recommended this stabilized laser now, so using this, we make an interferometer, okay? We make an interferometer, same as like we do interferometry when we calibrate your uh, LMF, okay? So that interferometer wavelength uh, depends on frequency, so lam uh, lambda is equal to C by F. C is constant. If we uh, exactly know the frequency, we know the wavelength, okay? So, in, if by this method, then 
by interferometric method, we can calibrate the gauge blow, distance with the caliper checker, whatever your slip gauge you can say, and then comparison method. So this is the method we do the calibration process by our new method. I hope you understand this one. But why we need optical frequency comb? Why? Accuracy is one of the things. Our uncertainty is also, but it's a direct realization. Especially we don't have direct realization. We totally depends on uncertainty of DEF component. Now uncertainty is removed. So we can directly realize the definition of metal. Okay. It's a real time synchronization of the standard, time standard also, because now primary standard, not now, but after a few days, is the based on optical frequency comb, that is optical clock. Okay, so we can directly give the time synchronization. Now we take the time signal, read the time signal, and then measure. So there is also uncertainty. Then its range is very high. So successfully, it's a frequency ruler. And we can only not do the optical frequency metrology, but we can do many other applications. I will tell. But why NPL India needs? Because it's CIPM recommended. So we have to follow the CIPM recommended. All the leading NMI, even NMI Thai, uh, Thailand have home, but India we still are developing now. Currently, NPL have I2 ideal stabilized helium neon laser that is also other thing is why we need comb because iodine stabilized laser calibrate only one wavelength 633 nanometer red but nowadays green laser blue laser all kind of leds are coming you can use those leds for measurement so we need for other wavelength also so now in npl we bought visible package but after a few days maybe a year or two days we will uh, buy from deep UV to far IR, full frequency spectrum, full wavelength spectrum. And other thing, conventional interferometer dose by iodine storage and other thing depends on air pressure measurement. Well, optical frequency comb is independent. So that is also one of the things. So you can see here by this one, because we have tens power six lines in one spectrum of comb we can look any m0 okay because i have n number of people i can pick up any so you you and c will work same but if there are only two employees then you depends only on these two so your uncertainty of work depends so this is the same principle applied here and it is totally independent on air pressure So this is the ex typical experimental setup. We use optical frequency comb, decided, and whatever distance we want to measure, we make an interferometer and measure here. And this is a typical optical frequency comb for length. And of course, uh, when uh, uh, it will come in NPL, you will see it is. So uh, I will not go in detail, and uh, I will can give a brief on uh, mass also if you want. Okay. So now, uh, be, like based on like length, so the story is uh, of length. So all other definition is also now fixed. Now second is defined by transition frequency in CGM atom. Delta nu means frequency. CS means CGM atom. Look, meter is also based on frequency of cgm atom plus c speed of light kilogram is also c speed of light and planck constant then ampere is also transient frequency cgm and electronic current and kelvin on voltage constant and candela on luminous intensity and mole is based on Avogadro constant. So now, similarly, like length, I told you how people thought to change the definition of length. Similarly, for others also, other committee have decided. 
So I gave one example of now len. So why I choose this topic first? Because we all are working on dimension metrology. What we I I interact with many company people, many person. They don't know even the name of optical frequency comb. They don't know what is the primary standard going to be have in India. What is other thing? So first and why there, there is change in definition. So that's why to give you a glisten how and why we should change the definition based on that requirement at that particular time period or point, you can say. So SI has been constructed to respond to the human requirement, not individual, it's a human requirement. Okay, easy. So by laser is choose, by they say light traveled in vacuum, in one by c second so we can take light as any electromagnet wave so we can use x-ray we can use microwave but it's not feasible so human requirement what is feasible easy to use easy to accept easy to adapt so that's why that time the easiest technology was iron stabilized linear laser now it's optical frequency count so now the dream we realized that time, the definition for all the times and for all the people comes in. True. So this is a card you can keep as a unit card. And uh, I don't have physical, but I can give you this. And then, then this say that liberty leading to the people means we will finally be free of artifact standards of measurements. Now we don't depend on any artifact. If artifact changes, something happens, then what we do? Maybe we can finish here. There is of mass also. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Now uh, we will continue the another uh, calibration part. Thank you very much sir for this brief introduction about the length parameter. How it came as we were all aware that earlier it was a uh, rod which was placed at Paris in BIPM and we all were taking this uh, standard as the national standard we are just going to compare after every uh, period, uh, 10 years of time. But now it is very good that now we have all the standards will be will depend upon the natural constants. It is very good and uh, certainly it will enhance the knowledge and uh, certainly we will be having now the everything is depending upon the nature. Good. So sir, uh, the next the basic uh, important part is again which we wanted to discuss with you. Uh, hello. Yeah, so now after knowing the uh, means how the definition of meter is changed from ages, now let's go what. In India, at especially CSR and NPL, what facility we have and what length, dimension, nanometrology section do. So uh, I will give. So so in my this talk, I will give you all you what is metrology. So in, uh, I will give a brief overview of my uh, department section. What is the NPL role in dimension metrology? 
then definition of material and its realization we have seen but i will cover little part here also then dimensional metrology task and traceability how we maintain there like for length angle other parameters also then major calibration facility in length and dimension what we have there how we maintain the international equivalence so we will cover in this talk so what is metrology metrology is a science of measurements and its application science of measurements means how we can improve the measurement process how what kind of science process are involved during a measurement how we can improve the measurement how we make the correction so these kind of uh, phenomena then these kind of process the science involved these kind of things is known as metrology so this includes all theoretical and practical aspects of measurement okay theoretical like i will tell you in the length we calculate the change in the refractive index using edlon equation okay and then we measure okay we we theoretically check how with the temperature l is change okay by l delta alpha kind of things so this metrology includes all the theoretical and practical applications of measurement whatever the measurement uncertainty and field of application so metrology is of many kinds is a physical metrology like we do physiomechanical metrology measuring the mass weight current kind of time okay then there is a chemical metrology like amount of substance measurement kind of thing then it comes to the another part where we have to incorporate for the legal framework okay so when is scientific metrology means how scientifically we make primary standard more stable more accurate less uncertainty then there is industrial metrology hai na sometimes there are uh, kind of like design some kind of pattern for this maybe not defined parameters but how to incorporate the scientific metrology to measure the industrial component industrial things okay then to implement those scientific and industrial metrology to the common man we have legal metrology that you people are doing so this is the national change is changing but here not changing okay so this figure shows the national quality infrastructure so we have we, you can say we have three bodies in our country one is bis bis gives the written written documents for standards okay then npl npl is the apex body which define okay which define and is the custodian of all the primary and secondary standards so npl is the apex body okay that makes and maintain okay and disseminate Ah, okay. okay so so uh, this is the national quality infrastructure where npl is the apex body that is the custodian of all the si units so def definition and uh, definition of units are in means like india by npl and that makes the standard for everything and that standard in written form document is done by bis okay when it document is written by bis as oh, oh, uh, and uh, definition is defined 
then there is a implementation that legal metrology do but like npl bis cannot do all the kind of things because industrial requirement is very high then there is a accreditation body napl which give accreditation to different laboratories that your measurement are as par as our national standards so if somebody measures in ahmedabad at some small laboratory that measurement is also directly or indirectly linked to the npl okay then there is a certification bodies inspection bodies testing bodies calibration bodies you know these are your legal framework so uh, maybe my friend ashutosh ji he will tell better so let's come to the length so in uh, because we are custodian of the length so the present definition of meter as i told in my last uh, presentation the meter is the length of the path traveled by light in vacuum during a time interval of 1 by c of a second so this is the definition of meter so you, to realize this si unit till now till today we are using iodine stabilized helium neon laser okay so we compared this uh, iodine stabilized laser in 2005 and 2014 so we uh, take this laser to and NM, other nmi either thailand france switzerland whatever we we do that collaboration at that time and we check so the uh, relative and uh, standard density is in within this limit 2.1 times by minus 11 then we think that our national standard is same as another national standard so by this we compare the national standard after this means primary standard after this your all other standard like secondary tertiary whatever you do that we will calibrate okay so dimension metrology what do that is length but length comes in the form of some kind of form features okay distance physical size so length breadth so that whenever we deal with this such kind of things we call it dimensional metrology so dimensional metrology is measuring the length displacement distance angle surface texture roughness and foam roundness so these parameters include dimension metrology so dimension is physical size or or distance from any object so when we measure such kind of things we call it dimension metrology when we measure simple distance we call it length metrology so dimension in inflection also known as metrology services validation verification product evolution Want, like your slip gauge how can you say this is 100 mm so you were you calibrate you verify then validate the data by uncertainty measurement so so we have a uh, wavelength interferometric based system like stabilized helium neon laser interferometers laser interferometers we have hai na and interferometric comparator for gauge block we have inter Uh, interferometric system also there are two gauge block interferometer and gauge block comparator so master of this will be always calibrated by gauge block interferometer so particularly in dimension metrology there are kind of standards artifact like and standards slip gauges and standard from one end to another end are this 5 mm or 100 mm you cannot measure in between so gauge block long gauge filler gauge these are and standards then there are line standards like scale glass scale you can measure in between the lines micrometer tape okay then then we have cmm step gauge ball bar ball plate then we have diameter standard hemisphere cylinder piston we have angular standard autocollimulator polygon rotary table index table then foam we have cylinder sphere hemi sphere optical flat parallel standard and the surface texture roughness and groove that in npl we have so we have various machine lmm we have 3d uh, cmm we have 
लेजर स्कैन माइक्रोमीटर हाइट मेजर कैलिपर चेकर डायल गेज टेस्टर माइक्रोस्कोप मेजरिंग भी मे यू हैव मेनी थिंग सर यू हैव सीन आई थिंक ऑलरेडी सो मॉडर्न मेजरमेंट टेक्निक इंक्लूड सी एम एम यू एल एम और एल एम एम इज सेम इज नो डिफरेंस जस्ट विथ चेंज दैट एम देन वी हैव मशीन विजन सिस्टम्स प्रोप सिस्टम्स लेजर ट्रेकर लेजर मेजरमेंट ऑप्टिकल कंपेरेटर वी हैव फॉर मेजरमेंट ऑफ रफनेस वी हैव स्टाइलस बेस्ड एंड ऑप्टिकल प्रोफाइलर बेस्ड then profile projector we have autocolometer we have cnc's form machine we have surface textures we have so these we have there so how to maintain the traceability now question comes we have but how do we maintain the traceability so so that's so i think you know the difference between primary standard and national standard can anybody tell me the primary difference between primary standard national standard suppose iodine stabilized is now iodine stabilizing is helium neon laser is primary standard our primary standard is same as the national standard and international standard is same but suppose bhutan afghanistan they don't have iodine stabilized laser so they have a national standard so the afghanistan have gauge block as a national standard so if you 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 have national standard other than the primary standard okay then tolerance limit is 0.001% but for primary standard what we believe zero there is no uncertainty okay so i okay so these are the things which we know okay so primary standard if we use primary standard then there is no uncertainty it's zero because it's a kind of supreme court the verdict we have to follow so whatever measurement is done by primary we believe it is true it is true the national standard if some country has then they have tolerance limit of 0.001% so in 1 meter you can make a mistake of 0.001% only okay then for calibration laboratory secondary standard there is only chance of 0.01% error then the primary value then company means tertiary like uh, the gallon the kapda meter bar so that is up to 0.05 and company final product Company have their standard, but the final product differ. So that final product is only 0.1 percent. Okay, and then last final product that goes in market for selling because they do not run out, run in, in and out, in and out. So those go out have maximum of uncertainty of 1 percent. So we have SI unit. okay and to realize that at that si unit we have primary standard okay so our primary is iodine stabilized helium neon laser and soon maybe next year we are going to replace it with optical frequency foam then we have interferometers two interferometers we have gauge block interferometer okay and uh, one is uh, uh, there is one more so using those uh, means uh, length measuring interferometer and gauge uh, gauge block interferometer so these two are our primary uh, secondary sources primary secondary sources two and using those two interferometer we calibrate our gauge block by gauge block interferometer lmm by uh, laser interferometer okay so we call it secondary and reference standard then there are working standard working is not like caliper checker vernier gauge block slip gauge they are the working standard and then measuring instrument they have because on the site you cannot take your always gauge block comparator so maybe that kind of probe you check so there are working so traceability for length measurement uh, uh this you can understand very nicely now so we 
realize the SI unit meter using a iodine stabilized helium neon laser. This laser, we did the inter comparison LK1 that I told. Okay. Then we have two interferometer displacement measure interferometer, laser interferometer. We generally do the LMM calibration, CMM calibration, other things. Then there is a gauge block interferometer, support gauges and other things. Using these gauge block interferometer, we calibrate your K grade and zero grade, zero, zero grade. Okay. I, then from this, we calibrate our gauge block comparator. And from gauge block comparator, we calibrate the gauge blocks. But I uh, maybe next in my next talk, I will tell gauge block. Okay. And then from these gauge block, we can measure the major instrument like micrometer, tape, dial gauge, vernier caliper, etc. Okay. Then by displacement, we calibrate the LMM and UM, CMM, LBDT Pro kind of thing. And by this LMM and UMM, we calibrate the long gauge, okay, ring, plug gauge, thread, other kind of gauges, something. And using 3D, we do caliper checker, vernier checker, spare kind of things. Okay, so this kind of things. So this is the total traceability, sir, how we maintain the traceability. So all these tertiary or working instrument are comparable with secondary, secondary is with primary. Then for angle also, we do the same thing because this is the length, but we measure the angle also. So as a unit meter we have, so we have for uh, 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 auto collimator that is equal auto collimator wavelength is calibrated by our primary and, and we have 12 phase polygon, okay? That will be uh, uh, inter comparison with PTB Germany or Metas, Switzerland, okay? Then from there we calibrate the reference polygon, our index table, another reference autocollimeter or laser interferometer. And then based on this, we measure angle gauges, level protector, sign bars, okay, and electronic level also. Electronic level we do in legal metrology? No? Eh? Polygon, it means uh, like three phase triangle that gives some angle, five phase triangle. Okay, I, I, I will show you. Then traceable uh, for roughness measurement, for roughness, we have a, a roughness measurement machine. Okay, so that roughness measurement machine based on semi uh, sphere, that is where we calibrate from Metas, Switzerland. And then we calibrate our machine, that same roughness is given by our machine or not. Then if it's the same, like six, 60 nanometer. Okay, and then we calibrate our system and by that machine, then we calibrate piston, cylinder, kind of things. And this is for roundness also, roughness and roundness. And roughness for a groove that we check by stylus. Okay, they have given some art, they have given some artifact. If our machine gives the same reading, it means our machine is okay, then we do. So I think I will skip this one already. So major calibration facilities. This is iodine stabilizer is our primary. This is 3D non-content optical profiler. I forgot to have one uh, image of new stylus based optical uh, stylus profiler also. Then this is flatness Jigo. This is gauge block interferometer GBI 300 to measure, calibrate the gauge block. Then this is four meter LMM. Okay, this is CMM, two CMM we have. And this is foam tester roundness measuring machine. And this is the angle. So this is polygon. This is polygon. So this, this have angle, okay? It's surface. So polygon six hexagon, then equal angle. So you can do like this. And this is auto collimator. This is more index table. So international equivalence, how we do? So like for primary, we take our helium neon laser to some other country, do the measurement. Then not only two countries, there is third, 
third other country should also participate so like if we go thailand thailand should go to japan or some other place so like if three are means intercompare and the others are equal then it's got a international equivalence so we have gone through these two uh, means uh, 13 apmp 2 euro 1 sim they are given the name as per the region so apmp asia program so uh, bipm have seven program like for african countries there is some program uh, i just forgot the name but I, i can give you if you want for asia pacific region there is some other program for russia and other countries there is some other program for us there is some other program and for south america there is some other program kind of this they have five or six i think six okay so this is a cmm i think so this is a inter comparison this is our laser we took our laser and fill india to thailand they have indonesian laser also see white one red one india and then the nmi thailand so this kind of inter comparison they do equivalence so then by this only we can say because we don't go for peer review i don't know you legal methodology go for peer review then any bill accreditation any bill na? so we don't go for that accreditation and peer we have just peer review only okay that is after 10 years or sometimes 15 years uh, this i already <laughs> introduced so maybe no and if something is here i will tell you so this i finish now and maybe gas block we can do after lens eh? and sentient gas block already one hour more than one hour or if they want now also i can do samajh mein aaya to sachi mein hai sir सर ये तो हो गया सर अब गैस ब्लॉक अभी करना है नहीं बंद मैंने बस ये जो किया है एक्चुअली इन द बिगिनिंग एज वी वांटेड टू शेयर द व्यूज ऑफ आर दीक्षित साहब डायरेक्टर लीगल मेट्रोलॉजी दीक्षित सर यू आर हियर सर आर यू एबल टू हियर अस यस यस हाँ हेलो आशुतोष जी हेलो हेलो आशुतोष जी श्री बी एल दीक्षित डायरेक्टर लीगल मेट्रोलॉजी यस आशुतोष जी सर आपका वॉइस नहीं आ रहा है वॉइस वॉइस तो आना चाहिए इट इज ओपन प्लीज चेक योर साइड हेलो हेलो यस सर यस सर नाउ वी आर एबल टू हेयर यू सर प्लीज सर काइंडली स्पीक हां सो दिस इज वेरी नीडफुल सेमिनार्स वेयर डॉक्टर चौधरी हैज एक्सप्लेन्ड ऑल द थिंग्स द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ मीटर्स and the meters uh, length related uh, all the parameters angles and then whatever the international scenario are there for that also so in this context jo hai i think uh, whatever the participants are there they are now well aware that what is the international scenario but i will like to speak that uh, uh, in our legal metrology act uh, all the si system of units has been defined and uh, from there the all the things may be derived uh, even though the national standards are being kept at the uh, npl 
but uh, legally we have defined the same units in our act and rules so wherever uh, the things related with the con consumers are coming difference in measurement and all that type of things so things comes under the um, uh, legal metallurgy act and rules and then we have the our reference uh, standards laboratory and uh, it is uh, a very welcome thing that uh, uh, today mr ashutosh agrawal deputy director rsl ahmedabad has organized such seminars from which uh, the legal metallurgist metallurgist and uh, the people who are working in this very field uh, they may get the maximum knowledge it is also to inform that the in legal metallurgy after the national standards we say that the, there is the reference standards laboratories and the reference standards are there so we are trying in length measure actually uh, we are trying our best to come at the reference parameters but uh, we are uh, checking the secondary standards meter bar of our uh, state government and uh, rrsl ahmedabad is the custodian to for the measurement of the length standards of all the uh, state government which is coming under uh, their regions like ahmedabad bombay uh, madhya pradesh chatisgarh and uh, uh, what about the states are there to have so you will find the lot of the manufacturers and the users of the length measures uh they are coming to rrsl ahmedabad for the calibration purpose and for the verification of their standards so you may visit the laboratory and you may find the things that uh, mr astros agrawal has maintained the very good standards and uh, it is good time that you may discuss with him also that uh how to improve and better it for the uh, country as well as for the uh, uh, country includes the everything sir so we are happy that dr choudhary came here and uh, he gave his lectures and uh, now the matter of the asutosh agrawal also he is also having very good knowledge on the subject matters uh, and uh, if he is having the more speakers then he may take it otherwise he may conclude those very things and uh, we should give a lot of thanks to dr choudhary ji thank you mr astu sagarwal thank you very much sir thank you very much we will sir continue with this uh, now uh, actually we wanted to say uh, we want to do explain our participants how the calibration of these length measures can be done and how the uncertainty can be calculated we have with us dr uh, dr jeveria from national physical laboratory who has explaining all these uh, before that very beautifully how the standards came how we have the uh, these standards which are related with the or depending upon the natural constants from the artifacts so uh, i will again request our speaker dr jeveria to kindly continue and explain about the calibration of the length measures and to calculate their measurement uncertainties sir please thank you sir thank you Uh, thank you mr jeveria ji please thank you sir thank you thank you very much yeah okay thank you okay thank you sir so 
द मोस्ट कॉमन मेजरमेंट सिस्टम इज गेज ब्लॉक वी कॉल गेज ब्लॉक स्लिप गेज मेनी अदर्स नेम्स ओके so gauge block in some countries as i mentioned told that is a national standard also those countries where they don't have helium neon laser as a primary source so gauge block is the most common used mostly widely used in industries companies regulatory bodies many places so calibration of gauge block is one of the most important thing so today in my this lecture now i will tell you about the gauge block how to do but what is gauge block everything i will cover so what is gauge block so first let me give you a brief introduction gauge block are also known as johnson's gauges johnson gauge is is the name of the scientist who invented who invented the gauge blocks okay he was a swedish mechanist in 1986 and still you see from 1896 to till now gauge block is one of the most i will say fundamental things of dimension metrology so gauge block and slip gauge is what it is a rectangular piece having left and finished surface at both the side okay which is having some distance apart so we call it as end standard also as you know so the length of the gauge is defined as the standard i uh, means uh, at uh, so like you to say it's 1 mm gauge or 100 mm gauge so that gauge is that length is defined at the particular environmental condition that condition is temperature must be i will not say should be must be 20 degree centigrade your atmospheric pressure should be one atmosphere okay 101 325 pascal water vapor content is 1333 pascal this that that is 10 mm of mercury and co2 content of air is equal to 0.03 so if we maintain this environmental condition in laboratory and we say that this gauge is of 100 mm then only we can say it's 100 mm gauge so gauge blocks are nothing but the rectangular piece but it's not only rectangular i will show you they are circular also so this is typical gauge block set we have most of our system so these are the gauge blocks so gauge blocks are what gauge blocks use as a end standard for transferring the unit of length from primary standard to the gauge blocks of various grades i will show you zero grade k grade one grade two grade so that is invented more than 120 years and still it is one of the best suitable method it is one of the best suitable method for the traceability for the industry and major nmi of various countries so i will show you the gauge block here maybe everybody knows Just a minute. Club started. Uh, give me just one minute. I want to show you the gauge blocks. So gauge block are one of the most uh, still now because their usages are so robust. Because any company cannot have a desired length. Let's say they want to make a artifact of one twenty three point five six. meter which is mm how oh, they cannot keep the standard for each and every length so they made the setup that setup okay of like 88 120 124 pieces depending on their requirement and mostly 124 pieces okay so by combining those pieces you can make your desired length suppose you want to make 125.56 then i will tell you how to uh, use gauges also to make those things so how uh, where and uh, for what purpose gauge blocks is used 
it is used for the calibration of vernier caliper micrometer dial gauge sign bar length measuring machine to check the length measure whether, whether it gives 100 mm or not but other than this also gauge blocks are used as a flatness also offset setting in cnc machines if uh, cmc machine gives some mirror so you measure using that cmc machine and give the offset value okay it's measure 100.05 so you remove 005 kind of should 005 something milling machine lathe machine lathe machine to cut the dimension calibration of probes in the foam tester means to check how what is the diameter and it is the one of the best thing to check the tool room of the industry if tool room of the industry is having error having problem okay then there is a if tool room have some problem it the problem will transfer from measuring to the production so when it goes to the uh, production it cannot so this is the gauge maybe you have seen so this have left faces this is left face here one face is here with shiny this left so in between these two left faces the distance whatever it is written suppose this is this is 100 mm you have seen here yes sir yes sir so 100 mm so in between these two left faces whatever the value is given that is exactly the dimension of that gauge so we have to check whether that is 100 mm or not so we check this gauge whether it is 100 mm or not is by gauge block interferometer so I, what are the uses to check the dimensional accuracy of fixed gauges to determine extent of wear growth or shrinkage so you check every year whether my gauge is 100 or not so if you check if you use a gauge for 10 years you will definitely know that after one or two years it will have kind of shrinkage i will tell you why it is shrinkage because uh, this steel gauge is made of carbon and iron so carbon get precipitated i will tell you later so it is used to calibrate the adjustable gauge, uh, gauges there are adjustable gauges in the industry because as i said uh, there is no standard that you want you can make 125.56 so they have adjustable so to check that adjustable whether it give 100 mm correct reading or not to set the comparator our comparator gauge block comparator dial indicator height gauge to the exact dimension to set the sign bar and sign plates when extreme accuracy required angular setup so that give the same reading or not to measure and inspect the accuracy of finished part left part of any other uh, artifact also so gauge block shape and size mostly slip gauges is rectangular piece of block having left and highly finished ends and should be passage accurately and low tolerance in flatness and parallelism i will i will show you here so so this is 75 mm okay so this face this face and this face is parallel flat you see flat from this end to this end is same no waviness no uh, difference okay from this top end to bottom end is same okay so cross section of gauge block is mostly all these gauges are 9 mm in width 30 mm in length okay and thus at length depends on like 0.5 to 0.10 mm so up to 10 mm this is the dimension after 10 
0.5 mm, 90 to 35 mm is the dimension. You see that there is change in dimension. Okay. So uh, for uh, less than 10 mm, the flat surface is big. Okay. So what are the materials used to make this gauge block? So there are three basic material. One is the steel. But anyway, tungsten carbide and ceramic. So why we choose those material? Because we need the material should possess, well, material should be resistance against scratch. So there should not be no scratch. So steel is hard material. Even tungsten, tungsten carbide is more hard. Ceramic is we are resistance, but it can break. So, but those industry which cannot afford to use ceramic, it must have resistance against rust. There should not be rust. So, ceramic have no rust, tungsten carbide have no rust, but it still have some rust. But it still is mostly used because it's cheaper, uh, cheaper and uh, scratch is and uh, hard, hard strength. And then the resistance again wear and tear. And hardness should be more than 100 uh, Richter hardware. Okay, so more than this 800 HV should be the hardness to make the cage block. And better stability again the heat treat treatment process. Temperatures increase should not it should not uh, shrink or contract so uh, large that it cannot maintain its dimension. So gauge blocks are of four kind. One is grade K grade 0, grade 1, and grade 2. So, based on this uh, type of grade, there are kind of tolerance limit that if we use K grade and we measure from 0 to 10 mm, then there the change in central land deviation should be 0.2 micron, not more than this. If it is more than this, that gauge is not used. You can remove that gauge. If the gauge is from 10 to 25 mm, the maximum central length deviation, I think you know central length deviation. I will tell maybe later. Okay, then it's 0.3 micron. From 25 to 50, it's 0.4 micron. From 50 to 75, it's 0.5 micron. And 75 to 100 is 0 0.6 micron. But K is K we do by laser. That's why. So I will tell one sentence again here. We have to replace all the artifact base and possible wherever, if anything, we want to measure using laser. Okay, so optical based measurement are much more accurate as compared to touch contact method. We must go for non-contact measurements. Then, permissible tolerance in zero grade. From there, zero to 10 is 0 0.20. But here you see 0 0.12. 10 to 25.14, that is defined by that uh, ISO, okay? 25 to 50.20, okay? So similarly, 50 to 75.25, and 75 to 100 is, I will give you, so you can keep. Maybe this is given, I don't know. Maybe uh, these value are not, all the value are given here, yeah, zero. Then grade one, zero to 10 is 0 0.2, 22, 25 is 0 0.3, 25 to same. And then grade two is the lowest. So zero to 10 is 0.45. But that uh, that kind of things used when you want to make slipper, chappal. It's very low product where dimension is not so important. Okay. So let now come to the K grade. So K grade is used for the use as a reference standard for the calibration of gauge block in 0, 1, and 2. 
it should be always not only should it must be calibrated only by interferometric method because that should be traceable to the primary if we cannot do by interferometric by laser method then it will become tertiary okay it's generally kept in standard room of the laboratory nobody can touch your masterpiece only you when you do your second one grade or zero grade not two grade two grade you cannot use this one generally kept in standard room very precise and costly set this will the cost of this one and k1 very highly differ then zero and one is used only for calibration of high quality metrology equipment means you measure something and or in but in only calibration environment if you measure outside it will not that also it is calibrated by only comparison this is calib k is calibrated by interferometric but zero and one is by comparison and used in calibration of one or two if zero then one if one then two and grade one for checking inspection item within the inspection area when when you produce something in industry and that comes on the conveyor belt or final testing there you can check that or you can calibrate micrometer dial gauge using one then two is just used for the offset setting in cnc's miller lethe something and it also calibrated by comparison so that is the usage also where you have to use which gauge that we should know properly so but to measure one of the important thing is ringing ringing means so ringing means let's say you you want to make a dimension of 27 so i take the two gauges 13 and 14 is 13 1/5 let's say 13 so how to achieve the 27 because you don't have 27 there so what you do you ring means you fix two gauges like this but you cannot fix like this okay so i will tell you the method so what you can do you go perpendicularly like this give a slight movement like this and then they are fixed they cannot be removed easily i will tell you the method you see now after this this is fixed you cannot now yeah you see it is yeah so ringing is by i will tell you the method also so the one of the most because many technical many person who are new and uh, even after experience also not able to ring properly and then measurement uncertainty is basically most of the time is because of ringing so due to the highly finished work in faces of the gauge block it can be easily rung rung means stick together and achieve the desired size even an odd size i will tell you how to achieve the size also one stack of ringing can give a film thickness of 25 nanometer so when you make the final dimension you remove this 25 nanometer for each two so if you use seven remove six six multiply by 25 surface finish and wonder wall forces are believed to be the addition of the gauge block in ringing so this is the reason why they get stick so method of ringing suppose i want to make a dimension of or you want to make a dimension of 42.125 so how to do so what you can do first you try to remove 0.005 means last digit 5 you have to remove so what you choose 1.005 then you have to remove 2 so how to remove then you take 1.12 choose from there and then it should be 40 so it's 42.125 you can do by aata hoga sir ye to nahi na nahi 
for uh, because when we take the class we have to teach from the basic so perfect ringing is when you do so as i told uh, told you that you should what you do make the normal okay so make the normal normal like this see in my slide little bit slightly move like this keep in center and then rotate and position until exactly and if you remove you see like it will not it will give you some kind of uh, magnetic effect you cannot remove so this is the ringing process okay and then we have rectangular also these are rectangular but we have square also sorry square square also we do the same thing so calibration of gauges so how do we calibrate this gauge block one is by interferometric method one is by comparison method so this we have in npl gauge block interferometer gbi 100 so we have two lasers here green and uh, red uh, red we calibrate by our uh, helium neon for green we send to uk and uh, this is the area where we kept our gauge block by interferometric method that will gives the interference pattern so the curviness or change in the uh change from the straightness of the um, newton's ring we can find out the uh, uh means uh, kind of what kind of how much is the change in the uh, surface okay and that either we have to calculate for by that one i will tell you here then another is gauge block comparator so here mostly i will focus on comparator so i will tell the principle and the thing because gauge block interferometer is only very few places only npl have but most of the industry you guys working with comparator so i make the so this is a typical comparator machine so if we see the diagram of this machine then this machine is compared this is the base stand it's a two probe probe a and probe b and we have a dro okay digital read out okay and then how do it work so these two probe probe a and probe b they work they call it lvd probe so they work on the induction current okay so uh, current is driven through the primary coil a means probe a causing an induction current to the secondary coil so what happen basically a voltage is generated when two probe touch a voltage is generated and that voltage is calibrated in terms of length okay. so the basic principle is this work on lvdt linearly variable differential transform is an electromechanical transistor that can linearly convert the position of an object to which it is mechanically attached into a voltage and we read the voltage but that voltage is just read that will not give the exact dimension you change the change in voltage in each gauges and that voltage change you convert that's the method so this uh, calibration uh, calibration by comparison method we have attribute test method or central deviation test as as i told but mostly we use central deviation test so we so central deviation means we measure this gap gauge using uh, center position so three position on center 1 2 3 like this 1 2 3 on three position we measure in the middle and we call it center length deviation so calibration setup what we need to calibrate 
the calibrator should be placed on study table. That table should not move, so have some vibration, have some kind of uh, movement like this. Environment and temperature should be 20 degree, plus minus one is allowed. Humidity is 50, 50, RH plus minus 10 is allowed. So electronic gauge flow comparator should be properly cleaned with benzene. Okay, so people put the grease or WDM or something like this to prevent it from the rust. So before measuring blocks, uh, gauge blocks should be cleaned with benzene and with brush and also with the air pressure to remove so that there is no dust particle. One dust particle is of micron size. It will give you the bad reading. Then calibrated standard gauge block set is also cleaned with benzene and cotton tissue and wiped with malmal or keomis leather. Only cloth. You cannot use any other. You must have wooden tweezer to hold. You cannot hold by hand, by plastic or by steel tweezer. Only wooden tweezer. Okay, you, uh, you should remove all the traces of petroleum jelly or any kind of fingerprint mark before using this one. Cleanly, gently place in a tray so that you can measure and keep, measure one, keep it, take, uh, take another, measure, keep it, third one, measure, keep it. So the tray is also there. Okay. An electronic gauge comparator and gauge block set are laid for completely soaking for one night, at least one night. Before measuring, you keep in the night so that it will be on the room temperature. So there will no temperature difference. Support equipment required for calibration. Thermometer you need. Wooden tweezer, as I told you. Surface place study table. Plastic and gloves cloth actually cloth it is cloth and gloves and cleaning material so this i can give you you can take environmental condition 20 degree must plus minus 1 is allowed 50% plus minus 10 is allowed primary operation what you can do clean the gauge and the comparator first don't turn on first clean always keep both gauges and computer for soaking at least one day one night examine that probe upper and lower par or square with us roller base and both must be collinear check by doing this that these must be on the same position okay the probe clamp screw should be properly tied it should not be loose because you have to move like this okay when you do Tighten so that there is no plane lower and upper probe. Tighten the template of comparator properly. Check that there is no leakage of air pressure through the tubes. Measurement procedure. So gauge block comparator is calibrated by means of gauge block. Generally M11 set on the interferometry. So these are the 11 gauges. So now one more thing, you should, I, because your gauge and our gauge are same. Yes. If they mix somehow, your whole process will vanish. Not only get, uh, to say, it will not only get the disturb or kharab ho jayega, it is vanish. Okay, one of, only one gauge of yours is mixed with mine. Okay, the average measurement in future, is no use. So the gauge block of the same material must mark with the identification mark. So we keep generally with color. Okay, and A and B or whatever you means by that you can remove and separate. So the difference between the center length, as I told you, of gauge block forming from pair. This also. So you measure the center length at three point, okay, and check these three readings. 
तो वन पॉइंट थ्री रीडिंग टू पॉइंट थ्री रीडिंग थर्ड पॉइंट थ्री रीडिंग टोटल नाइन रीडिंग बट मोस्टली इफ वी आर एक्सपीरियंस थ्री रीडिंग इज सफिशियंट If we are experienced, but if we are not experienced, take at least three reading first, and then by experience you can know. This is also traceability. I told you M eleven is calibrated by interferometric precautions. What are the precautions we should take when using the template? The measuring point must lie at the specific portion of the gauge block face. So. Gauge A and gauge gauge B should be on the same position. Both center length division should be at the same point, center position. It's not like this. One is loose, one is tight. Okay, you make a template like this. The measuring face on both gauges must be correctly aligned. The same thing which I am telling. They should not be visibly offset. The measuring probe on both gauges head should move freely without. Do not touch the gauges while measurement is carried out. Don't touch. Once you touch, your dust of your hand, anything will go. And one more thing, if possible, keep a uh, acrylic sheet cover because the moisture goes by your mouth. Also affect the measurement. So just keep a acrylic sheet and do like this. Do not note down the reading of temperature in the beginning and in the end, and check during measurement is there any change in temperature. So 0.1 degree brings a lot of change. Alpha L delta L alpha delta T. Okay. There should not be any dust particle. Glass shield, that is, actual glass shield between comparator and observer should be used. is uh, i will take so okay so now i hope you understand how to calibrate the gauge block so then we come to the uncertainty part meri diary thi sir diary ब्लैक कलर की डायरी है हाँ बस यही सब टेबल भी समझाऊंगा मैं अभी आंसर कैलकुलेशन समझाएंगे हम आई बिलीव दैट एवरीबडी नोज दैट टाइप टाइप वन एंड टाइप टू आंसर सो टाइप वन इज हेलो हाँ सर डू वांट टू से समथिंग ओके सो व्हाट यू टेक सो यू यू यूज Two gauges. One is op. One is your standard, and one is company standard. Let's say your standard is A, and company standard is B. So you think of A and B and note it down. Okay. So let's say your reading is first reading is. So actually, uh, in gauge block, we generally give the uncertainty of only 100 mm, not lower than this one. Because we believe that 100 mm is the most effective, okay, and uh, the uncertainty associated with 100 mm is highest, okay. So we generally give 100 mm, okay. So of course we measure all the gauges and tell you the difference between each gauge, but uncertainty for uncertainty calculation because we cannot do for 124 pieces, so we do for only 100 mm mostly. 
So you take the reading, 10 reading, at least 10 reading for one message, not less than 10, at least 10. You can take more also. So you take the 10 reading of A, 10 reading of B, and take the difference of B minus A, okay? Then test and then standard, okay? So there are test piece and standard piece, okay? And then do the T minus S. T means test, test piece, S means standard piece. Okay? And then take the average to the standard deviation and under root of that one is type 1 uncertainty, type A uncertainty, type 1 uncertainty, type A. Now the most important part is type B uncertainty, means other than our repeatability, type 1 is repeatability. So other than our repeatability, what are the other parameters which affects my measurement process? So type A is your repeatability, your pen readings. That may be wrong, okay? If you take something wrong on by either uh, instrument, either person or whatever it may be. But we believe that if you take 10 readings, on the same and it will come same, okay, then repeatability is maintained. Then there are type B uncertainty. I will, I will show you the paper. The paper aap sab log le lije. White paper hai na? Diya hai kya? Sir, aap le lije wo. We will wait. Any participant also need? White paper hai wala sir. Le lije, ma'am aap bhi. Isme last hai. नहीं मैंने आपको एक व्हाइट पेपर दिया है अगर आप उसको दिया था वो करवाने के लिए हाँ इसमें लास्ट पे है ये नहीं सर ये नहीं स्विच स्विच सर ये वाला जो था ना इसका मैंने प्रिंट आउट दिया है गेज ब्लॉक के अंदर से इसका प्रिंट आउट दिया उसे अगर है तो दे लेंगे हाँ स्कैन किया हुआ है so print out that. Ah, print out my so see. Usko diya kya naam hai? Takani wo jo lagta hai. Kya na ko? Agar hai to rakhlo, nahi to fir karte hain baat. Ah ha, koi dikkat nahi. Online bhi hai na. ठीक है. So ah. Now type A uncertainty we know it's a repeatability, but for type B uncertainty there are many parameters. So one of the most important is standard uncertainty. Okay, first one is due to the difference of thermal expansion coefficient. Suppose we are comparing steel with tungsten carbide. So we take the difference in thermal expansion coefficient. Okay. And we know the distribution. There are two distributions. One is normal, one is rectangular. If anybody don't know the difference between normal and rectangular, then I can tell. If you know, then I can go ahead. Okay. So let's say you are measuring a value that is, let's say, 5 mm. Let's say 5 mm. You measure that value that is always nearby 5.1 or 4.9. Okay. So when you plot, that is kind of a voltage man Maxwell distribution. Okay. And if you take 10 reading, it will be broad 90% is in between the nearby 5. Okay. But if you take 100, 10,000, more than 10,000 reading, it, you will get a delta function. Okay. So that is a normal distribution. So your value cannot be uh, means more than uh, means like 4.9 or 5.1. So that is called normal distribution. But suppose you are measuring the temperature. We have 20 degree, but your temperature can be in between 19 to 21. Distribution, okay. So any value come either 19, uh, sorry, 19.1 or 20.9. We have many value, but every value is correct. So that is a rectangular distribution. 
okay sir so by this you can calculate your drift so l that delta delta t is lx so by this method you can know the uns means the change in uncertainty of in the thermal expansion of two then Uh, standard uncertainty due to difference in temperature of both gauges. Now, suppose gauge A have 19.61 and gauge B, uh, B have 19.62. Ideally, they should be same. Okay? Go to this overnight. But if there is some change, then you can take that change. If no change, then nothing. Okay? Then, standard uncertainty due to shift in central position. Okay, how your center position is changed. So by that will come by experience. Okay, so that like estimate value for us is 0 0.02 micron. So you take that one also. Okay, then standard uncertainty due to associate uncertainty in standard gauge block. That that uncertainty comes from when we give give the this set for calibration for interferometric method. Okay, so he will give some value. Okay, that value is here. Okay, so what is the value you measure 100? So 100 multiplied by 0 0.3 plus 0 0.03. Okay, so roughly th uh, 3 micron. Then fifth is uncertainty due to drip in the standard. Whether standard is drip change, how it is drip? Drift in the standard. Abhi ke calibration. Who kyu aati hai? Yaran bhi hai. Who bhi hota hai? Actually, what happen? Sir, sound kya hai? Chalega? Okay, okay. I will tell you next. No, no. It's okay. 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 What happen? We have three material. Ceramic. We don't have anything. But. Okay. 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 नहीं नहीं उनको भी समझाना अच्छे से समझा देता हूं तुमने वो पहले रहता तो ठीक रहता क्योंकि बोर्ड मुझे अच्छा लगता है सो व्हाट हैपन सो आवर स्टील इज मेड ऑफ फेरस एंड आयरन सो जनरली आफ्टर 1 2 10 इयर्स कार्बन सॉरी आयरन एंड कार्बन सो कार्बन गेट प्रेसिपिटेट बट सेम सेम हैपन इन टंगस्टन कार्बाइड आल्सो ओके दैट विल सो दैट विल गेट प्रेसिपिटेट ओवर द टाइम when it gets precipitated, it gets shrinkage, mostly shrinkage. Okay, so that is the drip in the standard when you use regularly for 10 years like this. Okay, sir. So that is because of shrinkage, that is because of their internal bonding. Okay. Then combine uncertainty, you can combine square root of everything. And then expand and on K by 2. Now, if you don't understand anyone here, you can ask me. I hope you understand. Yes. Uh, is, there, is there any lag? If you can, then I will tell. Okay, I will give the example. Also, I will give the example. Then I will give the example. Okay, I will give the example. Also, this is uncertainty budget. So, we take these all. Means, it's case block is one of the most finest example. Okay. Anywhere, if somebody want to discuss the uncertainty of anything, then gauge block is one of the most preferred and widely used. Because it covers all the parameters, change in temperature, change in two temperature. So, okay, like this. Okay. So, all these things you do, source of uncertainty, coefficient of thermal expansion between two, difference of temperature, okay, shift of the probe, and a standard, के थ्रू जो आ रही है वो लॉन्ग टर्म स्टेबिलिटी जो भी हम बात किए हैं है ना एंड देन रिपीटेबिलिटी इन पांचों इसी तरह आप किसी का भी ले लो ग्लास स्केल का ले लो अब लेजर से करेंगे तो क्या होगी वो भी मैं बताऊंगा आपको लेजर से नहीं करेंगे तो क्या होंगे वो बताएंगे बताऊंगा मैं आपको पर ए, सभी में आप पहले सोचेंगे क्या-क्या पैरामीटर हो सकते हैं और पैरामीटर हो सकता है इन पांच के अलावा भी बहुत सारे पैरामीटर्स हैं और ये जो जो मैंने ड्रिप्ट का बोला तो आप शुरू में दो साल गेज का मत लीजिए चाहे वो 
इतना नहीं है लेकिन चार साल बाद में लेना लेना है आपको वैल्यू तो आप वो पैरामीटर देखिए और किस पैरामीटर से कितनी चेंज आ रही है कैलकुलेट इज सिग्निफिकेंट सपोज आपने मेजर की हंड्रेड एम में ट्वेंटी फाइव नाइनोमीटर किसी से तो यू कैन रिमूव दैट वन इसमें मैंने आपके अभी बना के लाया हूँ आज ही ये जो गैजेस आए हुए थे उन्हीं का बना के लाया नीचे ले लीजिए ये आपके इसी का है सर मिट्टी तो का स्टील का ठीक है अब हमने क्या किया ये रिपीटेबिलिटी ले ली हंड्रेड एम एम की स्टैंडर्ड एस टेस्ट टी इधर इन दोनों के बीच में क्या आया और टी माइनस एस प्लस सी एस प्लस सी ई क्या है सर हर गेज के साथ एक एसोसिएट एंसेंट आपको वैल्यू दी हुई है उसको ऐड कर दीजिए इससे ज्यादा क्लियर तो मैं क्या बताऊ सर और भी ठीक है आपने सोर्स मतलब हमारे स्टैंडर्ड की रीडिंग ली दस आपके टेस्ट पीस की ली उनका इरर निकाला ठीक है टी माइनस एस करके और टी माइनस एस प्लस ऐड कर दी आप सो के साथ जो एसोसिएट है अगर आप इसको दस के साथ तो दस की भी उसमें लिखी हुई वैल्यू पच्चीस की पचास की सेवेंटी फाइव की लिखी हुई है हर एक गेज ब्लॉक की वैल्यू लिखी हुई है तो आपने दस रीडिंग ले ली एवरेज डिवीजन टाइप पे निकल गई सर टाइप बी में क्या किया देखो एल एस अभी ये एल एस डेल्टा एल सी डेल्टा एल डी ये आप यहां से ले लीजिए क्योंकि हम लोग इस तरह करते हैं इसको तो एल एस है लेंथ ऑफ रिफरेंस गेज ब्लॉक एट टेम्परेचर टी इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी सो दिस वी टेक फ्रॉम द कैलिबेशन सर्टिफिकेट आपके हंड्रेड की दी हुई है ना वो वैल्यू दी है वो वैल्यू है सर फिर डेल्टा एल सी करेक्शन टू द कंपेटर कंपेटर में कोई करेक्शन डाला है क्या हमने तो आपको वहां तो मैंने पांच ही बताई लेकिन अब देखिए हम इनिशियल में और ज्यादा ले रहे हैं फिर हमने निकाला डेल्टा एल डी एल डी चेंज इन द लेंथ ऑफ डिफरेंस गेज ब्लॉक सिंस लास्ट कैलिब्रेटेड जो भी अपन बात कर रहे थे ठीक है ट्रेपोजोटर होता आपको ये तो मैं क्या बताऊंगा किसमें डिवाइड बाय टू करना पड़ता है किसमें डिवाइड बाय रूट थ्री रूट सिक्स करना पड़ता है ये तो मेरे ख्याल से पता होगा नहीं है तो हम एक क्लास फिर अनसर्टी के बाद में कभी लेंगे ठीक है फिर डेल्टा अल्फा डिफरेंस इन अल्फा अल्फा मतलब कोपिशेंट ऑफ थर्मल कोपिशेंट बिटवीन अनोन एंड रिफरेंस गेज अगर टंगस्टन का है स्टील का है तो स्टील का इलेवन पॉइंट फाइव है टंगस्टन का सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स है ना सेरामिक का फाइव पॉइंट समथिंग है ठीक है फिर अनसेंटी उसकी अल्फा वैल्यू में कितनी है फिर अनसिटी ऑफ थर्मामीटर आपने जो थर्मामीटर लगा रखा टेम्परेचर ट्वेंटी देने के उसकी तो कुछ अनसेंटी होगी वो यूज करना है फिर डेल्टा डिविएशन ऑफ एवरेज टेम्परेचर ऑफ अनोन फ्रॉम द रिफरेंस ऑफ डिफरेंस टेम्परेचर जो, जो आपका आया हुआ है उसके टेम्परेचर में कोई डिफरेंस है फिर डेल्टा लो करेक्शन फॉर वेरिएशन लेंथ लेंथ के वेरिएशन का करेक्शन दिया होगा कुछ क्या रेड में इतना करेक्शन लगा जो ई e लगाया है मैंने फिर डेल्टा एल ऑब्जर्व डिफरेंस इन लेंथ बिटवीन द नोन तो अब आप ये देखिए ये सब लगाने के बाद हमने ये मैं आपको दे जाऊंगा है ना तो ये वैल्यू हमने यहाँ ली इसकी लिमिट भी लगाई डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नॉर्मल है फिक्स वैल्यू है डिपेंडेंट है नहीं सेंसिटिव कोपिशन मैक्सिमम का वन ही होता है सर ठीक है फिक्स वैल्यू एल डिपेंडेंट डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सबका अनसर्टेन इन्फिनिट बता सकते क्यों होता है इन्फिनिटी हम डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इन्फिनिटी लिखते हैं मैक्सिमम का एंटीलाइन 
सपोज ये गिलास है ये गिलास यहाँ रखा मैंने अभी गिलास इधर जा सकता है इधर जा सकता है इधर जा सकता है इधर जा सकता है ऊपर जा सकता है मान लो नीचे नहीं जाता है लेकिन इसके अलावा भी एन नंबर है जो इसको अफेक्ट करते हैं मेरा बोलने के भी कर रहा होगा एटमोस्फेयर प्रेशर भी कर रहा होगा हवा चल रही होगी हमें नहीं पता तो ये एन नंबर तो हम इसको इन्फिनेटी बोल देते हैं हीरियो फ्रीडम जिसको कंट्रोल करने वाले हैं लेकिन जिनका पता है जैसे ये है ना अपनी रिपीटेबिलिटी दस लिए हैं तो नाइन रीडिंग्स कर सकती है बाकी सबका इन्फिनेटी है जिनका क्योंकि हमें पता नहीं है मेरे ख्याल से समझ में आ गया होगा आज गेज ब्लॉक पच्चीस से है ना तो ये गेज ब्लॉक का है अब मैं आपको एक और एग्जांपल दे देता हूँ सर क्लासिस का कर दीजिए उससे समझ में आ जाएगा दोनों का क्योंकि तो उसमें लेजर इन्वॉल्व है आईएलसी लिंकेज का भी लेके आया था पर मेरे ख्याल से इतना ये सुनते सर है आ रहा समझ में सर आया सर तो कुछ देखा हुआ आए हुए ना आपको इन फील्ड में नहीं ट्रेनिंग में नहीं आए तो अब जैसे सर हम ग्लासेस के लेजर से करें और किसी से कर सकते लेजर में तो लेजर में से करने पे अब क्या क्या अनसर्टनिटी है तो पहला सोर्स तो है कि लेजर की वेवलेंथ है वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम लेजर की वो जो वेवलेंथ है वेवलेंथ करेक्शन जब वी ओ एल और वी एल हमने ऐसे लिख रखा है क्योंकि वो नोटेशन में पहले ऐसे लिखते थे लोग पर ये एक्चुअली वेवलेंथ में तो वेवलेंथ कंपोनेंट पीपीएम में आता है मतलब माइनस टू लेकिन अगर वो है क्या तो वो लगाया हमने देखिए फिर मेटेरियल टेम्परेचर वेरिएशन जो मेटेरियल में कर रहे हैं ग्लास स्केल पे कर रहे हैं किस स्टील का कर रहे हैं किसका कर रहे हैं है ना वो बेड पे लगा रखा है बेड किसका है सेरामिक का है बेड तीन तरह के सेरामिक का होगा स्टील का होगा वो लगा है थर्मल कोपिशेंट ऑफ एक्सपांसन वेरिएशन अब इसमें एक चीज है सर अलाइनमेंट है आपको लगेगा कि ग्लास स्केल बिल्कुल सीधा है वो एक्चुअल सीधा नहीं होगा वो हल्का सा ऐसे होगा और प्रोसेक्शन जब लास्ट तक आएगा तो वो चेंज हो जाएगा तो वो अलाइनमेंट की जगह हमें देखनी है अब लेजर है तो अलाइनमेंट है वो वहां भी था वैसे गेज ब्लॉक में भी था दोनों का है ना फिर अलाइनमेंट ही रह फिर एज डिटेक्शन एज डिटेक्शन मान लो आपने वन के बाद दूसरी लाइन पे गए तो ये एक सपोज ये लाइन है इस लाइन को ऐसे मान लो सपोज दीज आर टू लाइन Suppose these are two lines, है ना? For simplicity, I make it square, big one. So you focus your cross section at the edge here, okay? And then second also you fix at the same edge. But this cross section, in one case it is here, in one case it is here. Because it's very narrow, you don't know. But in the meanwhile, when you pass through the hundred mm, okay, this cross section may shift. Fix it. And then laser resolution, laser का resolution कितना है जो आपने लिया है वो Then edge detection, laser head uncertainty, laser resolution, then repeat measurement, whatever we do, and then line width की एक एम एम से दूसरे एम एम की जाए तो जो सेम डिस्टेंस है दो से तीन में नहीं होता जनरली बहुत कम होता है बहुत प्रिसाइज में होता है पर एक से दो एम 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 गए फिर दो से तीन गए तीन से चार गए है ना पच्चीस से छब्बीस गए तो वो क्या मेंटेन है वो स्केल वाला देता है कि नहीं है मेंटेन है सो लाइन विथ वेरिएशन भी हो सकता है एंड देन माइक्रोस्कोप जिससे देख रहे हैं उसका रिजोल्यूशन क्या है फिर इसमें अब फिर टेम्परेचर ऑफ सेंसर दोनों सेंसर लगा रखे टेम्परेचर एक मेटेरियल का एक ग्लास स्केल या जो भी कर रहे हैं स्केल का है ना एंड देन कम्बाइन तो इसमें आपके लेजर के पार्ट बढ़ गए लेजर की वेवलेंथ बढ़ गई लेजर का रिजोल्यूशन बढ़ गया माइक्रोस्कोप का रिजोल्यूशन बढ़ गया एंड अलाइनमेंट ये चार कंपोनेंट एक्स्ट्रा हो गए और चीजें वही है इसमें आपको नॉर्मल लेना है किस में रेक्टेंगुलर लेना है किस में ट्रेपेजोल लेना है ट्रेपेजोल बहुत कम होता है ट्रेपेजोल तो जो ही है जैसे बताया ना गेज ब्लॉक को दस साल बात करते रहेंगे तो 
तो क्यों वो रूट वो टू रूट बाय थ्री रूट बाय सिक्स की ओर देख के वो जो नाइनटी परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस वैल्यू है वो कहां पे लाई करती है उसके ऊपर डिपेंड है थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर योर दिस ब्रीफ प्रेजेंटेशन एंड कैलकुलेशन ऑफ मेजरमेंट अनसर्टेनिटी हाउ टू डू द कैलकुलेशन एंड डू द कैलकुलेट द मेजरमेंट अनसर्टेनिटी आई थिंक दैट दिस टूडेज वर्कशॉप इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर डूइंग द डायमेंशनल लेंथ और स्लिप गेज कैलिब्रेशन एंड कैलकुलेटिंग दियर अनसर्टेनिटीज हाउ आर वी विल शेयर द प्रेजेंटेशन एज वेल एज द अनसर्टेनिटी कैलकुलेशन इन एक्सल शीज for the benefit of the laboratories and the persons with this i would like to thank our additional secretary our director legal metallurgy our uh, the scientist uh, the learned scientist dr mukesh jevariya sir and all the participants who actually participated and try to learn try to uh, try to share our views with them thank you very much and would like to thank dr shri bn dikshit director sir dikshit that legal metallurgy government of india who is here to bless us who is here to motivate us thank you very much sir with this we close today's session and uh, next week we will meet for the next topic next subject thank you very much thank you all